Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for the September 14th, 2023. Have your host, James J. Mailoff, here, and we're welcoming to the WFHR stage our good friend, Jasmine Carbajal. She is the 4 H Associate Educator with Marathon of Wood Counties. Jasmine, good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, let me. There we go. There we go. Good to see you too. I actually <laughs> turned it on and then turned it off on accident. I don't know why I did that to you. Um, it's always nice to have you in studio, to have you around and talk 4-H. We appreciate the time. Um, uh, first off, how are things going with 4-H? Everything, you know, it's after coming back from the fair. It mm-hmm. seems like it's okay, slowing down, but really not because is you know it's already mid-september and so we are in the middle of well in the start and middle of our enrollment season so now that like the fair is over it's time to really start just talking about for each some more and see like maybe some new youth they want to join our clubs and our last year's youth they can uh go ahead and start re-enrolling for the year again now and so it's really starting to get crazy again i remembered what i wanted to ask yeah. uh, jasmine the fair how did the yes. fair go the fair went well mm. we we had lots of activities um, every day over there, um, aside from like everything scheduled. So kids could come in and families could come in into our junior fair building and just participate in some extra things. We had a digital goose chase going on that families just loved and the That's youth awesome. just loved it. And That's they great. had to go around and find different things. And so it was a great fair. Um, you know, one of the things that you and Laura and I talk about uh, with 4-H is the evolution of 4-H and yes. how how much uh, more it is it is uh, expanded its yes. its range of of, of st- a type of kid or any of these things and the things that you guys do at 4-H. But there's certain stuff that just is the same as it's always been with 4-H. 4-H and fairs they just yes. go together. <laughs> they sure do. But uh, while a lot of us, especially those that didn't take 4-H or anything, we see that and we kind of we kind of uh, you know get that and make makes sense. Yes. But why is it so integral for 4-H to be involved with fairs from your perspective? From my perspective, you know, I think that... I've always thought that our youth is our future. And so the fair is a perfect place for really our youth, not only in 4-H, but really like FFA and some of these Mm -hmm. other organizations that come to the fair to really showcase those skills of not only in their animals and and what they've done traditionally, but some of the other projects that come in. And that is where we see their talents. That is where they are so proud to showcase kind of what they've done throughout the year and see those skills that they have learned and for me as an adult, it really just gives me that faith that we are in good hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get that feeling. Uh, time and time again, it, it hits me uh, yeah. and it's like, whew, oh, that feels good. Yes. It's, it's almost like wiping your shoulder, your forehead. Yes. Like, whew, All right. We got good youth coming up. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> um, you brought up a, a something in there that I think maybe not the most integral part of this scenario, but it is, it is important the the pride and the the feel good the confidence the kids take from having their animals or or having any of these things out there for the people to take in um there is any opportunity to build confidence in our youth i think is is kind of a, our a part of our job as right. adults you I know agree with you. whether whether you are involved in 4h or in the education system or even have kids right. i think it's on all of us as adults to do that and yes. we're able to do that in those situations and yes. the fairs and that Yep, the, the fair is big, and, and we're always happy happy to be there and see all the youth that participate and increase our numbers every year, right? Mm-hmm. Like That's always the goal, too, to get more kids involved. Jasmine, you mentioned enrollment. Uh, when it comes to that, for families out there listening and thinking about getting their children involved in 4-H, are there things you should know as far as enrollment goes, uh, you know, as far as districts, if you're listening in this district right. or that? That's a great question. So we actually have um, clubs throughout the county. Mm-hmm. So what we always tell our families is – you know, on our website, which we will mention at some point today, you can go on there and find our directory of clubs. And then you can look and see, okay, do you want to find a club based on where they meet that's convenient to you? Or mm-hmm. the day of the week might be more convenient to you. Some of our clubs are more centered around certain projects, like animals, certain animals, or mm-hmm. certain things. So is that going to be a better fit for your family? Um, and you can always call our office or call uh, the leaders directly because their information is on our website as well. And say, hey, can I come check out a meeting and just kind of feel what this is like and so that's what we always encourage families Mm -hmm. to do um to come just check it out and see what it's about and then 
from go from there. Um, so that is one important thing. It's looking at that. The other thing is, um, if you enroll now through kind of November 1st, then that guarantees you going to the fair. So we just mm-hmm. finished talking about that. So mm-hmm. then, you know, we'll talk about projects and all of that kind of later in the year, but mm-hmm. definitely that guarantees you like if you're enrolled, you're good to go. You'll be showing at the fair. Um, and so, yeah, that would be the first two things to kind of just consider kind of checking out something and we're always available. So if mm-hmm. there's always like just inquiries or we always have events going on, the, you know, throughout the year. So it, you can enroll any time, but really mm-hmm. this is like our big recruitment period. Is there uh, age requirements uh, with any of this? Sure. So for ages uh, kindergarten through 13th grade, mm-hmm. um, and there's really minimal fees to enrolling mm-hmm. at a county level. I think it's like a $3 per member. And we've talked about this before. Like we don't ever want any sort of amount to be a challenge. So mm-hmm. that really we don't we wouldn't really even talk about it too much. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, if a family is really interested, then we'll talk about it. And if there's a hardship, then no worries. Uh, some clubs might have some other fees, but it's very minimal to join. 4 age. Uh, so I, it's something that I, I champion and I'm so proud of. Uh, anytime I talk about 4-H, is, is that right there? Yeah. You know, uh, it, there's a billion things to be proud of. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to to talk about, though, is that um, the idea of not letting any kid not be able to take in 4-H for those reasons. Right. That's yeah. that's beautiful. That's cool. We are proud of it too. You have some wonderful events coming up. Let's dive into Let's these. Do it. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about these. <laughs> Which would you want to talk about first? <laughs> let, let, let's go chronological. Let's go. Okay. Let's go in order of the of uh, the dates sure. of these. And awesome. I, I, I believe that starts us right at a uh, one dose. So it actually will oh, start no, no, us no, no, right no. at the cornhole. Uh, cornhole tournament. Yes, yes, yes the cornhole so tournament. So when we talk about kind of the diversity and projects, we started um, countywide. We kind of revived a program, and it's now our teen leaders program. Mm. And mm. so this, uh, our teen leaders are for six grade and up and um if you're interested in this, if you have a youth that's in sixth grade or older and you want to be a teen leader for our county, uh, get in touch with us. We'll get you kind of more information. But the teens, the group that we have right now, they're so excited. They're so ready. They want to be putting on events. And again, right, these are their ideas. This yeah, is them yeah. independently coming up with the things they want to do. So they want to do this cornhole tournament. <laughs> so this is to wrap up our National 4-H Week, which is coming that first week in October. So it's October 8th. And it's for youth in grades third through 13th and they will get to pick kind of their category of what grade level they want to um, participate in mm. and then they it starts at three so when they come to the park that we're going to hold this at they're going to sign up individually ahead of time and then that day they get to meet their partner mm. and then they we go ahead and we start the tournament and there will be some trophies I hear and light refreshments so it's going to be a really fun event what I'm really proud of is that it really is the teens that are currently members of our county program that are leading this, that are putting this yeah, on. Isn't yeah. that cool? How has that gone for them? So far, it's going well. They mm. did a uh, pool day this summer, and oh, yeah. we had a pretty good turnout good. for that as well. Good. And that excited them more, right, to do more things. And mm-hmm. they are starting to look at community service opportunities as well. And so I'm really excited to really just be there, not only to support them, to watch them as well and yeah. and grow it. So if there's any other teens interested in, in um, joining teen leaders, let us know. When it comes to some of the things, like uh, the it, signing up individually, being paired with somebody, and, and possibly possibility of making new friends, yeah. new relationships, was that something they came up with the the team? Yes, they were because awesome. I was like, so are you? Because I asked, right? I was like, do you, are you going to have them sign up as a team already or individually? Like, no, let's have more fun and just everybody sign up individually, and we'll just you know do it that day. And and I love that because that spontane spontaneity is how you say it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it, it works. It, it, it works. Um, that is awesome. I love that. I um I growing up I thought I was one of the like one of like ten kids in the whole universe that was bad at making friends. Yeah. I just thought that I was just I was like world famously bad at making <laughs> friends. I just could was no good at it. Um and then as I got older and I start having kids of my own and I start seeing them and and other children when I teach classes and that I see oh it, it wasn't just me. A lot of kids have trouble with this. A lot of yeah. kids have trouble meeting and interacting with more people yeah. or new people. What a great opportunity for that, for mm-hmm. just that alone, let alone the fun, the cornholing, all of the other stuff. And like the age group, right? Like sometimes we have a hard time thinking about what are yes. what do our teens want to yeah. do? What is something engaging for our teens? So this is perfect for that age group mm-hmm. that like are just looking to go out and maybe make new friends or maybe just learn something new or just have fun as well and interact with some other some other youth. 
Another fun part of this, too, to me, uh, is with, with uh, the, 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 the sport itself. It, it's not too hard to learn. It's one of those ones that everybody can play. Yes. Um, and and that, that inclusiveness is, yes. is really nice, too. Yeah, see, we're excited. It's it. I was. I don't remember what I suggested they do, and they're like, "No, we want to do a cornhole tournament." Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. "Okay, we'll do it." <laughs> I, I love that part of it too. That this is well, you and Laura come up with some amazing stuff, and you guys <laughs> do an amazing job. Uh, it's a great idea, not only for a life lesson, for uh, really the, a part of the point of 4-H, but just in creatively. Just, you know, is, is kind of fun for to, to yeah. sit back and see that happen, I imagine. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, we, we do come up with some great stuff, but we always love it when it comes from them because yeah. we know they'll engage better that way. What are the details of this event? So, again, this uh, cornhole tournament for uh, youths three, third grade through 13th grade, October 8th, and it starts at 3. We want you to sign up by September 30th, so by just by the end of the month, so we know how many people to plan for as far as, like, refreshments. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be holding it at the Northwood County Park uh, by that park pavilion there. And there is a registration link on our website, on our Facebook page. And so any questions, you guys can give us a call too. As we always like to tell you to, uh, we encourage you to follow them on social media. F yes. Facebook's a great way to keep up yes. to date on all these things and another great way to register as well. Yes, for sure, because we put the direct links on there. Mm -hmm. uh, the email and we'll give the, or the website, we'll give this again uh, before we wrap up, 4h.extension.wisc.edu. Um, we have another great event coming up. We do. So we've talked about Juntos before. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited to offer another round of it. So Juntos, um, it's a very unique program, specifically for our Latinx uh, high school students. Um, and we're hoping to expand it this year into our middle school students mm -hmm. as well. But we are going to start off again our Juntos program in Marshfield um, in October, October 12th. And so for those of you that might not know what Juntos is, it's a six-week series where we talk about just different topics related to our education system in the U.S. So we have a lot of families um, from Latin American countries that come here and they get lost or mm -hmm. the students are a little lost or, mm -hmm. you know, there's this miscommunication. I know with me being a first generation student, like just my parents didn't understand a lot of the things that I was going through mm -hmm. when I went to college. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we do with this program, what we try to do is just bridge that gap, just bridge the gap. That's all we're trying to do. Get mm -hmm. the parents and the students on the same page, show them kind of what their post secondary education options are. You know, sometimes we talk about a four year university that's not the only option out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know this. There's lots of great tech colleges around oh, yeah. here. We have lots of other apprenticeship programs that kids can do. So really, it's just diving into those topics in a safe space mm -hmm. to say, like, here are all the other options, right? And with the students, um, with specifically the high school group, you know, talking about what do you need to actually graduate? Did you know that you need these credits and these classes? for your school. Did you know you could take dual credit classes? Mm -hmm. Like that is sometimes a very foreign concept to some families. Um, so that's, you know, we talk about uh, financing. So what is really, how much does it cost to go to college? Yeah. Do you want to go to an in-state school? Mm -hmm. Because that might be $20,000 cheaper yeah, than like, yeah, you know, yeah. if you go out of state or even the differences between in-state versus out-of-state tuition. What does that mean? So really important topics for our families that sometimes, you know, we don't realize that there that some families don't know that. So it's um, starting in October, October 12th. It's usually 6 to 7.30, around that. Um, we provide dinner. We provide child care. And it's at the First Presbyterian Church there in Marshfield. So we're really, really excited to offer this again. Forgive me if I brought this up before, but uh, growing up where I did, I uh, grew up around uh, a ton of Latin families. And, and in the melting pot of Chicago, yeah, yeah. every style of, you know, Puerto Rican, Cuban, yes. Mexican, all of this. Uh, a, a good friend of mine growing up, uh, uh, Carlo, it was, uh, his family is from Puerto Rico, and he was first generation too. Um, I, I'll never, ever forget as long as I live, him not being at school one day, and then not the next yeah. day, and not the next day. And it was because... His parents, and there was this huge divide between them understanding what was going on, what the, his son mm -hmm. was learning, mm -hmm. and, and not wanting him to, for one, they weren't even sure necessarily the school schedule. 
You yeah. know, there, there right. was nothing in Spanish. And this right. is because I'm old. This is the 80s we're talking <laughs> about. Um, and and, and uh, the change, the shift yes. that has gone on with this, yes. where we have things like this available now, where our school systems are that much more prepared for these things. Yes. But there's still gray area. There's still kids yes. that slip through the cracks. And that's where uh, something like this is so integral. And especially in a state like this, if I can. Um, Wisconsin has a, a long history of immigration, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's well uh, talked about, uh, you know, uh, going back to uh, Polish families coming to this country all the way to Mexican-American yeah. families, yeah. the Hmong community, right. um, so much of it. Yes. And this country is built on immigrants. Correct. We are all immig- come from yes. immigrants. And so unless you yes. are a Native American, you, you, we all come from right. this. Yes. So this is the essence of America. This is uh, classes like this, things like this. It's what we're about. Um, to be able to know about this is pretty cool. It's not for me, maybe, but I just love hearing about this uh, uh, class and that this is something right. we have. Right. And as you talk about it, you know, the way that I see it, too, like this is really what equips programs like Juntos, equips our students to succeed. Yes. We don't want any of our students to be left, right? Like without the skills or the knowledge mm-hmm. that they could be learning and they could be more successful because eventually, like, they're going to contribute to our economy, yep. our local communities, right? Mm-hmm. These are all. All youth that are going to be involved in one way or another in our country. So, like, why not give them those those not those things, those resources that they need, that their parents need to really help them be successful? Uh, a rising tide raises all boats, mm-hmm. and, and and it when uh, we help all kids, uh, it, yes. it helps all of us. Correct. I agree with you. You mentioned uh, some of the things that are available for this. If you're a family and you need child care, that is available. Yes, we have child care. So we really actually, we encourage for the whole family to come together Mm -hmm. to the program like Juntos. Why? Because then, you know, both of the parents or the family members that the student uh, lives with, they're all getting the same information. Um, That way the kids get, we have 4-H activity, so Mm -hmm. then they start learning about just what they can do in Mm 4-H, right? Like it's not just, it's, it's so much more so then, you you know, we start rolling with those types of things and kind of get them integrated with those types of programs as well. So, yes, there is child care. We know that one of the barriers for our Latinx community is long work schedule sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, you know, if I understand completely getting home and feeding the family is important. So let us take care of that. So come over. We'll feed the family for you. So really there, we're trying to minimize as many barriers as possible. It's completely free to participate in Junto. So if anybody knows of any families that might benefit from this, let us know. If transportation is an issue, um, we can work around that. We can see how we can either do gas cards or things like that. Um, So yes, we are really excited to offer it. Last year when we offered it, we had one family take it Mm. they absolutely loved it they absolutely like the change from the students of when we started with juntos from week one and then learning all these things through the six weeks by the end of it the student was so motivated Mm. that like the parents are still telling me today like we are starting the new year again. This, you know, going into the second year, the student was a freshman. Now it's going to be a sophomore, and the student's just so ready to go. Like, and I was just like, oh, that just warms my heart yeah, because I felt it. Yeah, you know that that motivation now is there, yeah. and so even if that's the only thing that you get from the program, it's a little bit of motivation because now you know a little bit more. I think that's perfect. I think we've reached the goal. Forgive me if I'm prying, but Jasmine, would something like this have helped you when you uh, were first starting? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. You know, it's it's a hard. I think that's why I'm so motivated with um, expanding this program and really mm-hmm. offering it in not only Wood County but Marathon County yeah. since I cover both counties. Because being a first generation student, there were so many times that, like, even in high school, like my parents, like. They're like, what do you mean you're going to join a club? What does that even mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's really important for college applications because they don't look at just my grades. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, but, you know, in our culture, it's like you just get good grades. And I'm like, yeah, in Mexico, I could get good grades and probably get away with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like go into a lot of colleges. I'm like, here, it's they want to see it. All these other things. Am I involved in sports? Am I involved Mm -hmm. in clubs? Am I doing community service? Mm -hmm. Because all of those things is what makes, you know, 
per some colleges mm-hmm. or some situations, yep. a whole yep. individual. And so those were really hard conversations because my parents just didn't get it. And I had really good teachers, some yeah. really yeah. good teachers that advocated mm-hmm. for me and talked to them directly. <laughs> and that was how they could help me convince them to join, yeah. you know, a club. So I think that something like this is so important because it really starts those conversations. And the parents are seen from another adults, right? Like at this point now I'm the adults in the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. that like it's okay <laughs> if you're a kiddo one to do this or that so mm-hmm. it's really helpful it would have been really helpful for me so i'm just so passionate about it thank you for sharing that yes, appreciate of course. that uh, again can we give the details of this yes yeah, so this will be juntos um in marshfield starting on october 12th for six weeks uh from 6 to 7 30 dinner and child care will be available um at the first presbyterian church they are located there at 200 south lincoln avenue in marshfield and they you know if people are interested we don't even have a link for this they just can call me up and let let me know they're coming. My phone number is uh, 715-261-1244. Jasmine, I was uh, I was getting uh, some ink done the other a uh, couple weeks ago, and yeah. uh, the lady who uh, does my tattooing, Dawn, she's an old high school friend of okay. mine. Uh, she works over Images and Ink here in okay. town. Dawn is a big 4-H person, and she heard uh, one of our conversations. I think it was you and I. It might have been Laura, yeah. but she was referencing it and talking about it, and and when I was talking to her, one of the things I realized was you and I, you and Laura and I, of course, certainly we focus on the kids and getting right. kids involved and enrolled with 4-H. Yeah. Um, to the parents out there or maybe to former 4-H members uh, that are still curious about 4-H, that still would like to help, you can. Uh, there's this thing called volunteering. Uh, yes. We encourage that. <laughs> uh, if people are interested in it and, and how has that gone with volunteering, could we, we certainly, I imagine, can use more. We can always use more volunteers. You know, I love my role as an educator, but I also love it when I have guests or other speakers or other adults with their talents really bringing those to 4-H. Mm-hmm. And so we can always use more volunteers. Um, we really, you know, run on volunteers. Mm-hmm. Like our whole, the majority of our program, mm-hmm. really all of our program is volunteer uh, work. And so we can always use more. So in, And also, right, we, we always talk about this, like if you are a business mm-hmm. or you own a business, you have a space or, or things like that, let me know because we're always looking to also diversify where we hold our programs. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way we have a better reach. And that's and so I'm always willing to collaborate with businesses, with but yes, with parents, with adults that have a special skill or talent or they, they want to bring something to 4-H, just let us know. We will yeah. take you. <laughs> I've talked to people, uh, and I'm just using this, uh, just grabbing out of the ether or something, mm-hmm. but I've talked to the, a person about wood carving. And, mm-hmm. and one of the things that came up in it was, well, I, I don't know many kids that wood carve anymore, and I'm worried about it dying. And and to him, I said, the, you've got opportunities yes. to keep, you know, make new wood carvers. Yes. You can teach a class on wood carving absolutely uh, it, it, it's it's kind of like um if you want this to continue it's on your your shoulders you yes. can help that absolutely i would love it it's like it because i don't know how to do that yeah, right yeah, like you yeah. and i could probably oh, no. like, we would be taking that class it, it, for years i would i would take me on my own if i took the class right. though yeah that wouldn't and be how so bad. cool and that's what's cool about it too like you know i see youth that like i you know when i can partner with someone mm-hmm. or when someone has a special skill they teach this workshop and then the youth that show up for that are really invested. I mean, yeah. and now they have a project that they can like showcase at the fair or they have a new skill or they can start fostering this. You know, we could offer it more than once. And so, yes, absolutely. That sounds like a lot of fun. And you just never know uh, what you might spark in a young mind. Correct. Uh, and, and, and if you get these things out there, that's how we find yes. out or how we make them happen. That's right. If we can go over the details of the cornhole tournament one more time before we let you go. Yes. So our Wood County Teen Leaders present a cornhole tournament on October 8th and that's for grades 3rd through 13th. It starts at 3 o'clock um, at Northwood County Park in here in Wood County and yeah we have uh, a registration link on our Facebook page on our website and we w- are just asking people to sign up by September 30th. And Jasmine if people have follow up questions uh, want to know more or just ask about certain things how can they reach you? So they can either reach me via email and all of that information is on our website wood.extension.wisc.edu or our main office number there with Wendy or Carly is 715 715- 
421-8440. And you'll get either myself or Laura, and, and we'll be happy to help you. And if you have any trouble with that, I always uh, like to let people know. I throw it into the search engine, uh, Wood County 4-H yes. or something, and your your website pops up immediately. Right it's the away. first thing there. So. Yes, yep. Yeah, either way, you just reach out to the 4-H if need be. Looking forward to hanging out again real soon, Jasmine. Thanks yes. for the time. Thank you. We'll have more Midday Magazine for you tomorrow right here on 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR. We are locally grown radio.